This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 33 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. On today's episode, we're diving into the topic of dealing with disappointment as an entrepreneur. On Monday's episode, our guest is Rachel Branke. Rachel is the mother of five, the wife of an army veteran, a practicing lawyer, author, photographer, cancer survivor, and she competes as a Team USA athlete. On Monday's episode, Rachel and I dive into the world of the legal side of entrepreneurship and what you need to know as a person who is chasing those big ideas and dreams. There are a lot of great insights that she shares, so make sure to check out Monday's episode with Rachel Brenke. Now let's dive into today's episode as we explore the topic of dealing with disappointment as an entrepreneur. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and I am so excited that you've chosen to join us for today's episode all about dealing with disappointment as an entrepreneur. If you haven't already, we'd love to connect with you. One of the easiest ways to do it is to click that subscribe button wherever you listen to this podcast. And if you're listening through jumblethink.com, I encourage you to go over to Apple Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, wherever you like to listen to your podcast and click that subscribe button. So now let's jump into today's topic, which is all about dealing with disappointment as an entrepreneur. I know I've encountered moments of disappointment in my entrepreneurial journey, and as I talk to entrepreneurs and dreamers, people with big ideas, all of them say the same thing. Disappointment is an integral part of the entrepreneurial journey, and it's normal. So if you're feeling that disappointment or if you felt it in the past, you're not alone. We have all encountered it. And anyone chasing big ideas and dreams encounters moments of fear, failure, being overwhelmed, and so many other emotions, some good, some bad, some that encourage us to push through and some that trap us. But disappointment is one of the most difficult emotions to overcome. You see, disappointment can set us back and feel like the unbeatable, the unovercomable obstacle in our journey as an entrepreneur. Those who push past the disappointment and into the unknown often time and time again, those are the ones who see the breakthrough for their businesses and ultimately in their own lives. You might say that those entrepreneurs are stubborn or don't know when to give up, but I look at it and I say they're relentless. They know that if they keep going, if they keep putting their eye on what they're trying to achieve, where they're trying to go, that big idea and dream, that ultimately they'll get to the place where disappointment will wane and they'll see the moment of breakthrough. So to really have a conversation about disappointment, we first have to define what we're talking about. So disappointment can be defined as the feeling of sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. Let me say that again. It's the feeling of sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes and expectations. When we start out on our adventure into entrepreneurship, we're filled with possibilities and what could be. We set our hopes high and often our expectations even higher. For many, this can lead to the world around us crashing in and crushing our big ideas and dreams. So let's take a moment and break that down even a little bit further. I see three key areas to disappointment. There's the feeling, the feeling of sadness or displeasure. There's the cause, which is non-fulfillment, and the why that cause and feeling are happening, which is how we set our hopes and expectations. These three things are critical to the foundation of understanding disappointment. For many of us, we view disappointment as bad, as an ultimate failure, and many times this leads to the death of our idea and dream. But when we redefine what disappointment really is and how we can utilize it to our benefit, we take that redefined word of disappointment and use it as a catalyst 
a catalyst to propel us into a future that meets our dreams and expectations. Often we can prevent disappointment, and other times we have to harness that disappointment. Either way, we turn the disappointment from a negative into a positive, into a thing that is good for us. In today's episode, as we dive deeper into this topic, we're going to break this episode into two sections. The next section that you're going to hear is one in which I'll give you some ways to prevent disappointment. It's setting yourself up for success from the beginning so that you don't have to struggle with the disappointment in the end. The second segment, which we'll do in a few minutes, is going to be where I share some strategies of turning disappointment into positive change for the future. Along the way and throughout the episode, I'm gonna share some of my own experiences with disappointment, how it's impacted me, and how I overcame that disappointment to achieve success. So if you're ready, let's dive in and go further into the world of disappointment and how you can make it an asset for your entrepreneurial journey. Before we jump into segment one, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide. And check out our free guides that we're currently offering on the website. We have two really cool guides. The first one is how to know when you found your dream. And the second one is overcoming the unknown. Both of these guides will help you in your journey of chasing big ideas and dreams. So swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide, that's jumblethink.com slash guide, and download your free guides. Now let's jump into segment one, which is all about preventing disappointment. So you have a big idea, you have dreams, and you're ready to move into it to start your entrepreneurial journey, and it's so exciting. It's a season of looking to possibilities, what ifs, and really stepping into the things that have been churning inside of you, in your mind and in your heart, your passions. These things are tied to you. And so preventing disappointment can be very difficult to do because it's tied to our core especially when we're chasing big ideas and dreams and turning them into an entrepreneurial journey. If you remember, in the intro to this episode, I I broke down disappointment to three areas. Feeling, the feeling of sadness or displeasure, cause, which is non-fulfillment, and the, the why, how we set our hopes and expectations. So when we start this journey, one of the basic places we need to begin is understanding our identity, value, and worth. If you've listened to this podcast through season one and now season two, you know that I am a big fan of starting with identity as the core of being a big dreamer, having ideas and making them reality. I've talked about uh, tools like Strength Finders and Myers-Briggs and other tools that will help you understand you and how you work and how you operate. Preventing disappointment really stems from a place of knowing your worth and value. If you put your worth and value in the idea, it's going to make that disappointment so much larger than what it would be if your idea and your identity were separate. But your idea is not your identity. So that's critical to remember. If your identity is wrapped up on the things you do or the things you accomplish, then you're not building a foundation of true identity. So what is true identity? I think that true identity can be broken into four main areas. The first one is character. The second one is qualities. The third one is beliefs. And the fourth one is personality. Character can be defined as the mental and moral qualities of an individual. This is what they'll stand for. This is how they process and think. This is the very foundation of of how you know that they're going to respond based on the character in which they have. The second one is qualities, and qualities of an individual can be drive, willpower, passion, connection. These are the things that that they take action in. This is how they respond. The third one is beliefs. What do they believe? This is their trusts, their faiths, their confidences. These are the things that are very core to building even character and qualities. And the fourth one is personality. This is persona. This is the characteristics that you would identify the person with, happy, sad, engaging. And so all of these different things that make up true identity, some of them are similar, some of them are different. But when you have the foundation of of these identity issues, character, qualities, beliefs, and personality, you can begin to have a foundation of true identity 
where your value and your worth comes from identity and not by the things you do. I think so often in our American society, in our Western thinking processes, we identify our identity by what we do as a career vocation. And as an entrepreneur, that's based on your ideas and your dreams and your passions. And so it makes it really hard when you have failure or disappointments in those areas that you put that onto your identity and then it shakes you to the core because your ide- idea then is reinforced by your character, your qualities, beliefs, and personality when they're really separate. Your ideas and your dreams are built on top of those, not the other way around. And, and in our society, we really reverse that where what we do is the foundation for identity when it should be shifted and our identity is the foundation for what we do, our passions, our purposes, the things that drive us forward. So understanding our identity, value, and worth is a foundation for fulfillment that will lead us away from disappointment. But what else can we do to really prevent disappointment? Well, one of the things we can do is we can be conservative with our goals and expectations. Often when we have big ideas and dreams, we set these goals and expectations that are unrealistic. We think that we're going to start the next great podcast like I did and that we're going to have a million viewers or a million listeners in you know two months. And that's just not realistic. And the more conservative we can be, the more that when we have success, when we have those breakthroughs, that just builds the confidence. It builds the ex- excitement because we're not hitting the disappointment. But when we hit our, uh, when we set our goals and expectations too high, we get stuck in this place of often feeling disappointed, often feeling like a failure that we don't measure up, which leads us to the next thing. And, and that's don't hinge our expectations and hopes on the successes of others. We've all heard the stories of the garage billionaires or the podcasters that have a a billion or a trillion downloads 10 days into the release of their podcast. What we don't know is the true backstory of their story. They're telling the highlight reel. They're telling all the positive things, the amazing breakthrough, the celebration of their success, but they're not telling you what it took to get there. We, of course, hear their story, we hear their success, we see the results they're getting, and we build our expectations and our hopes on their story. This will lead us to disappointment almost every time. What we didn't know about that individual is that maybe they were blogging for 15 years, and when they did the blog, they've had uh, an audience now of 100,000 people. So when they talk about Uh, you know, 100,000 downloads, what they're doing is they're leveraging their network. Or maybe they've been on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter since one of those platforms started. And they have a massive audience because they've worked that space. They've created their own voice. They've created their space. And and now they're leveraging that asset to grow their podcast. You know, when we hear about the business startups like Amazon or Apple or Disney – What we forget about is Disney had years and years of failures before he started the Walt Disney Company. Steve Jobs was fired from his own company. You look at Amazon and the time they took and the energy they took to build their company before it ever launched um, to actually generate revenue of a large amount like it is today. When we look at the successes Without understanding the full picture, it will lead us to disappointment, failure, and broken hopes and expectations every time. Now, I'm not saying don't have your heroes like Gary Vee or James Alcatcher or Walt Disney or Steve Jobs. What I am saying is research these people and know their full story. When you know their full story, you can understand the heartbreak, the failures, and the years of trial, error, and and work that they took to get to the other side, to see their dreams, their ideas become a reality. Another thing you can do to prevent disappointment is taking that one step further, and that's being informed about the realities. What does it take to start a business? What does it take to turn that idea and dream into a reality? Do the research, do the homework before you get started to understand the insides, the outsides, the the trials, the obstacles that you may face so that you're informed about setting good goals, good expectations, and creating the reality that you really, really want to 
create. Now, being informed on the realities doesn't mean you have to take some 15-week course from some guru. It doesn't mean that you have to go to college or university to get your, your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate. What it means is you got to put the time in to read the books, to research articles online, to talk to people who have done this journey before you to learn from them. Now, there's nothing wrong with traditional education. There's nothing wrong with those webinars, those 14-week courses. What I'm saying is that there are alternatives to the traditional methods. So if you have obstacles like financing, if you have obstacles like time, find what works for you so that you can build that foundation to be well informed on the realities of what it's going to take to turn your big idea and dream into that entrepreneurial journey. One of the simplest things you can do is call up that person that you look up to, or 10 of those people, and just reach out to people until they say, yeah, I'll grab coffee with you. Yeah, I'll jump on Skype with you. Whatever it takes to get with the right people so you can learn from their journey, so you can start setting expectations. And maybe out of it, you gain a mentor, a coach, or a friend along the journey. One of the other things you can do to prevent disappointment is taking that coach and mentor step one step further. And that's you cannot make a big idea and dream become a reality on your own. Don't do it alone. It will be hard. It will be filled with heartache and broken dreams and failure if you try to do it on your own. You need to have a network of friends and family members. You need to get into communities of other entrepreneurs, other dreamers, other makers. You need to get people around you at the coaching level, the mentoring level. When you want to prevent disappointment in your entrepreneurial journey, get around others because when you're stuck in the mud of your own stuff, whether it's a failure, whether it's a setback, whether it's a disappointment, whether it's a broken hope, you need that perspective of somebody else outside of the situation to bring clarity to you, to say, dude, it's not that bad. Get up. Let's start running again. We're going to get to the other side of this setback. Begin to talk about the emotions, the feelings, not just the actual things that are setting you back, the obstacles you're facing, but the emotions behind it. When you communicate things that are going on internally, all of a sudden you feel freer, you feel lighter, you feel like there's hope because you've taken this weight off of you. You've moved, moved past that thing that's holding you back and you've been able to get it out there. And it's amazing when you get it out of the darkness and into the light, how that little step will bring freedom from the disappointment of broken hopes and expectations. So communicate not only the setbacks, the obstacles, but all the, all, also the emotions behind everything that's going on. And the last tip I have for you today before I share some stories about preventing disappointment is that you can do one simple thing to help you prevent disappointments. Often when we take on a new idea, a new dream, an entrepreneurial journey, we're thinking big picture. I know I am. I'm a, a person that likes to have big ideas and think the big picture through. I'm not a person that personally likes uh, the nitty gritty, the operations, the procedures, the systems. And so for me, one of the things that have, has been one of the most successful things is what I call micro goals and micro experiments. And what that means is that often when we have a big idea, when we have a big dream and we're trying to make that a reality, we're thinking on the macro. And what we need to start doing is start thinking on the micro level what I call micro experiments and micro goals. Often we set these massive goals and expectations for our journey. And in that, we never measure up. What we can start doing is setting micro experiments and micro goals. Run these experiments and they're experiments. So what you're doing is you're learning from them in the process. If they fail, they fail. But what do you learn from it? If they succeed, what did you learn there? And then apply that knowledge Reevaluate the success and failure and set new expectations. What you're really doing is you're bouncing through the idea till you get to the big picture. And often it's a really fun journey if you make it fun. And by making these little experiments and by understanding what they're telling you, you're making the process fun. And when you make it fun, it's much easier to not hit disappointments. It's also really much easier if you're breaking them down to micro things, because if the big picture idea fails, it feels catastrophic. But if little micro experiments along the way don't pan out to exactly what you want, 
then what happens is that you just bounce to the next micro experiment and you're working through the idea. You're working through the dream. You're experimenting. You're trying. And in that process, you'll see really cool things happen. One of the things that you'll see happen is that your big idea and dream will begin to evolve as it matures. Often our big idea and dream in the early states is very immature, although we don't see it because we see the potential. And in these micro experiments, we let the idea mature, we let it grow, we let it become something more. And in that journey, instead of having the disappointment of the original big idea and and dream failing, that entrepreneurial step out failing, what we have is that it morphs into what it's supposed to be. When we set these micro goals, we're removing the big picture expectation, which removes the disappointment, and we work through the idea, we work through the dream, and we create the entrepreneurial uh, outcome that was supposed to happen. Micro experiments can also be applied to everything. They can be applied to research and development. They can be applied to researching your audience. It can be applied to marketing and trying different things for your website and social channels. It can be applied to how you communicate and how your message is presented. It can be applied to different tools, whether you're going, hey, I want to do a podcast, or maybe it's a vlog, or maybe I use... Facebook Live or Instagram Live instead of just using my traditional method uh, that I've always used. These micro experiments allow you to try every aspect of the idea and dream out from different angles, from different perspectives, from different ways the idea could grow from the community around you. So using micro experiments is one of the biggest tools that you can use for preventing disappointment. I said I would share a couple personal stories, so here is the first one. When I started the podcast, I had already built a business doing web design and development, and I had worked with numerous other clients, helping them with building websites, marketing their website, launching products, and I thought, okay, when I launch my podcast, this is going to be really simple to do. I thought within three months, I would have you know, 20,000 to 30,000 downloads per episode. I thought that I would have a massive exploding uh, audience on Facebook and Instagram because of launching this podcast. And I get a couple months in. I've had a couple incredible guests and the numbers just weren't hitting it. They weren't getting anywhere near what I expected. I had built my expectation on past successes, but I'd also built it on what other people had done. You hear about the John Lee Dumases, you hear about the James Elkachers and Stephen Dubners and the Gary V's. You hear about all these podcasters who seemingly launch a podcast and all of a sudden they're having 100,000 downloads per episode. And so you think, oh, I'm launching a new podcast. I've been successful in business. And now I'm going to get, you know, I'll be conservative, 20 to 40,000 listeners. And then when it didn't happen, I got disappointed. It just wrecked me. It was devastating. I felt like a massive failure, like I didn't measure up. And then I would start seeing on these podcast communities on Facebook groups and things like that, these other people that are like, oh, I'm getting 10,000, I'm getting 15, I'm getting 20,000 downloads. I just launched my podcast a month ago. I just felt like it was all falling apart, that I didn't measure up, I wasn't good enough, my podcast wasn't good enough, that I wasn't helping anyone, and that it was just a waste of time, a waste of energy, and obviously I wasn't a good podcaster. Then I started doing some research and digging into some of these other podcasters, and I found that a lot of them had big audiences, whether they had a blog or maybe they're on Facebook, and they were were already having uh, 50, 60,000 people on their emailing newsletters, and so they launched their podcast, and they're getting big numbers, but it was still only a fraction of their audience, and they were posting how successful they were and and they were and they were doing awesome things but for me I felt like I wasn't good enough that I didn't measure up and that my podcast was never going to see a breakthrough moment you see I hadn't taken these steps to prevent the disappointment I had set my goals way too high my expectations way too high I hadn't done true research into how others had successful podcast launches I almost gave up my podcast because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And it was all of this disappointment as feeling like a failure in this new endeavor. I'd been successful before, so why couldn't I do it this time? 
So I reached out to a couple friends of mine who were podcasters, and they also helped book book people on podcasts. And I said, hey, here's my situation. Here's what's going on. I posted on some of the Facebook groups, and it was amazing the outpouring I heard. People were saying, hey, this is my story too. This is what happened to me too. And I just... I I thought it was just me. And so I communicated my emotions, my frustration, my disappointment, my failures. And I asked questions, got feedback from others. And in that, I was finding out that I had set myself up for disappointment and that what I was actually doing was the standard for the industry. And I just needed to stay the course. I had talked to others who had been there. I had talked to people that are there. I had research now, and then I just turned into micro experiments. And what I found was interesting. I found a couple things. One, that the right kind of gas, finding the people that reached my audience was critical to the success. And I was just having broad stroke people on the podcast. Needed to be more focused. And then I also found that as I started introducing my own episodes, like today's episode, where I gave my own voice, all of a sudden, those episodes would get much bigger numbers than some of the guest episodes that I would have on the podcast. What I found was I was relying on others to have a voice, to build my voice. And what I needed to do is one of two things. I needed to define my guests so that they had a common voice of saying amazing things about entrepreneurship and... I also needed to start sharing my own voice, my own opinions, my own passions on the podcast. And as I started to do that, I began to see that people responded to the episode. I started getting messages on Facebook and an email of people that the podcast had touched and reached. I thought that I wasn't reaching anyone, even though I had numbers that were good numbers. They just weren't that 10, 15, 20,000 downloads on the first episodes. And so... I started hearing from people and hearing how the podcast had impacted them, encouraged them to step out on their journey. I needed to persevere and push in. And when I did that, I began to see that I was making an impact through the podcast to others. So I continued to push in. I continued to stay the course and I I got this feedback. I began to do micro experiments. I began to set new goals, new expectations. I informed my realities and I am beginning to see the fruit of those years, that year and a half now that I've worked hard to continue the course and to build a great podcast, to bring the right guests on and to communicate my message with the passion I have to see others realize their dreams and passions and ideas become reality. So what can you learn from this? If I would have had the same insights as I do now about preventing disappointments on new entrepreneurial journeys, I would have been able to hedge my disappointments. I would have been able to set myself up for success, and I would have actually saved a lot of time by doing things like setting conservative goals and expectations, like being informed about the realities, like not hinging my success on the stories of others, by setting micro goals and running experiments and doing it with others. These things would have helped me set up success so that I would have been further along than I am now. Instead of dealing with the disappointment, I would have been growing the podcast. I would have been investing into the right things to continue the momentum. In a moment, we'll be back for segment two, where we talk about turning disappointment into positive change for the future. But first, you have big ideas and dreams, and you're stuck, maybe filled with fear, hitting obstacles, or you don't know where to start. The Jumble Think team is here to help. I would personally love to sit down with you and talk about your big ideas and dreams. It would be my honor to become your trusted coach and mentor along your journey of making your dream a reality. So swing on over to jumblethink.com slash consulting. That's jumblethink.com slash consulting to learn more about how I can help you, how the Jumble Think team can help you make your dreams and big ideas a reality. Now let's jump into segment two about turning disappointment into positive change for the future. Maybe you're living in a place of current disappointment. Maybe you've hit that roadblock for you because of something that's happened, whether it's an expectation, whether it's emotions that are going wild, whether it's that failure, you're finding yourself in a moment of disappointment. You're there, so how do you move forward? 
Turning disappointments into positive change for the future starts by really getting into the dirt of looking at the past. When we have those disappointments, it's easy to just write them off and ignore them. But you can't do that. You need to learn from that failure. You need to take in and really assess what's going on. Assess what happened to cause this failure, this disappointment in your entrepreneurial endeavor. This is really hard to do, but when you have that honest perspective and you've really taken the moment to process what's going on from an emotional, from a factual, from a historical standpoint on the disappointment, you can start making progress for moving forward. The next thing you really need to do is get outside perspective. This outside perspective will help you remove the blind spots of what you're missing and what happened. Often when you're in the mess of disappointment, when you're in the mess of all of this stuff going wrong, you need that second pair of eyes. You can't do it alone. And we talked about that in segment one, but this is a little different. This is about assessing the past about getting that honest viewpoint of what happened and helping get the blind spots clarified, getting those things that you're missing out of the blind spots and into the center focus where you can address them, attack them, and really come up with a plan and strategy for overcoming them. Having that outside counsel, that outside perspective, whether it's a coach, a mentor, a friend, a family member, a group of accountability partners, whatever that looks like, going through the disappointment, going through the failure, and really assessing it with others is an asset to you that will help bring value to that failure. Another thing that's going to happen to you in that moment of disappointment is you're going to get stuck. And getting stuck is something that that you really have to address everything that's going on, specifically emotions. You may get to a place of depression or, or just fear or defeat or failure. All of those emotions and then self-doubt are going to creep in. And you need to change your mindset. That mindset of what's going on, not seeing the failure – not ignoring it either, but addressing it and then seeing the successes that can be born out of that disappointment, seeing how you can turn the negative for the positive. Don't become the victim. Don't become the person who gets stuck there. Really use this as a catalyst to push you forward. In those moments where your mindset is stuck in the negative, one of the best things you can do is change your environment and change your routine. What I mean by that is if you've always structured your day one way or you've always worked a specific location, if you can, change the location, change the routine, and shake it up and get out of the normal structure and into a new structure. Changing the environment will help inspire you. Changing the routine will help you think differently. So often when I get stuck, whether it's in a failure, whether it's in a disappointment, or just in brainstorming and creativity, stepping away from the everyday norms and into the unknown frees me up to be inspired, but also to think differently, to think creatively and outside of the box to come up with creative solutions for moving forward. One of the other keys to unlocking the change that you want from disappointments, the the turning disappointments into a positive change for the future is to actually step back and remember why. And I'm gonna break this into two segments. You know, Simon Sinek talks about starting with why, but sometimes you need to remember why. And the way you do this is you need to start by identifying why you're doing this, why this matters to you. And you need to remember What is the catalyst for making you want to chase this big idea and dream and make it into an entrepreneurial endeavor? Then you need to pivot and remember why it matters. And why it matters is more than just you. It's the bigger picture. Why does this matter to your family, your friends, your community, to the global world? Why does your idea and dream, your entrepreneurial endeavor have significance past you? Remember why it's significant to you? 
and why it matters past you. And this will help you get back to that center place so that you can begin the journey of moving forward. Once you've done the introspective work, you've looked at the failure, the disappointment, and you've learned from it. You've gotten to a place where you're changing the mindset and starting to think positive. You've gotten that outside perspective and you removed the blind spots. You've remembered why and you've changed your environment, your routine, and you're breaking the patterns of the old. You're going to have to face the dreaded fear. Disappointment and the, the place of being stuck in disappointment is often bound by fear. And you have to make a proactive movement forward to break that fear. Unless you move forward, unless you step out in faith, fear cannot be addressed. This could be the fear of failing again or the fear of your identity of, of not measuring up, the fear of letting others down, the fear of repeating the patterns of old and just being always depressed. Whatever your fear is, you're going to have to address it, address it, and you're going to have to step past it. You're going to have to move forward and make the choice that only you can make and step into a new future. And now you have to get to work. You have to set up new systems to prevent the failures and disappointments of the past to create that new future. Take the things you can learn and create systems that reinforce positive change and not the, the negative things that built the disappointment and failure in the first place. You need to get organized. You need to have a plan of action. And without this plan of action, you can't actually turn the disappointment into positive change for the future. You'll repeat the past over and over again. So you need to have a, a plan, an action plan for the future so that you can step into this new reality. These are some of the tools that you can use to turn disappointment into positive change for the future. But it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of introspection. It takes a lot of preparation so that you create a future that is better, that gives you the, the best opportunity for the success that you want. Change is difficult, but it is the foundation of turning those disappointments into positive change. It is the foundation of a new reality. So you have to face the change and come up with a strategy for the change. So here's a little story from my past. Back a couple years ago in our web development company, we had built an amazing team. We were working with some of the largest companies that we had ever worked with. We were creating new systems, new ways of approaching web design and development, creating new technologies and innovating. It was an exciting time in the company. Well, our, our biggest client decided after working with us for a couple years, it was time for them. They had grown their business large enough to bring that client work back in-house and to approach it from their own internal team. But things were going to be okay because we had other big clients. We had other projects we were working on. Well, the next thing that happened was one of our other largest clients had a situation that happened with their own team and they could no longer pay us. This is when disappointment and failure began to creep in. This company that I had built that I had built a team around me, that we had worked with these amazing clients, all of a sudden was crumbling. We didn't know how we were going to pay employees. We didn't know how we were going to sustain the business. We didn't know how we were going to pay our bills like rent or the Comcast bill. We didn't know how we were going to make it to the next day. And all of a sudden, this disappointment creeped in. I had failed at running a successful business. I had failed at employing people and providing for their families. I had failed my family, my community. I had failed my friends. And all of a sudden, I was in this place where the world I had built was crumbling around me. I felt like a failure. I felt like everything that I could do, I had done wrong. And this broke my heart. I felt like a disappointment. I felt like I was delusioned on what could have been. I felt like everything that I had worked hard for, that my team had worked hard for, was falling apart and there was no hope. 
And ultimately, we lost employees. We weren't able to pay back things that we wanted to pay back right away. We lost a lot. We lost a house that we were working on getting built. We lost uh, friends in the mix of this. And it was just heartbreaking. It may be, in all honesty, one of the lowest points of my entire life. But I knew I couldn't live there. So I started talking to friends and coaches and family members, started processing through this and coming up with a plan. And the plan wasn't perfect. And we're still working on overcoming some of the obstacles that that had left behind. It's just the reality of life sometimes. But in addressing it, in approaching those problems, I came up with a plan with those those counselors, those mentors, those friends that helped us become aligned with a new path forward. To be honest, I didn't know what the future held, but I knew that I couldn't live in the past. And it was time to step up, to move forward, and get into a new perspective. Looking back, there were tons of decisions I made that I could have made better around employees, around staffing and over or understaffing, on how we treated customers and how we approached projects. When I looked back and I was really honest with the situations, I was able to see places where I had failures, where I could have done better or a team could have done better. And now as I build a new future, around what we did in the past and what we're doing today, I'm able to create better systems, better procedures, better ideas from the lessons I learned in the past. There are tons of things we're doing today and changes that we've made that would have never been addressed if if success would have just continued to happen. Most likely, this podcast may have never even actually happened. So, Looking at these different things that happened along our journey, we were able to make pivots and shifts from the lessons we learned in the past to set us up for a better future. There are still moments of of disappointment in my own heart. There are still moments of feeling depressed about the past and the failures and mistakes that were made. There are still moments where I have self-doubt for moving forward and creating this new future that we're creating at JumbleThink. There are moments where I question the decisions I'm making today based on the decisions I made in the past. But nonetheless, there were lessons learned that are setting us up for new successes, new futures, and amazing breakthroughs today. As the wise fish Nemo once said, just keep swimming. And often, this is one of the biggest lessons we can learn from disappointment. When disappointment happens, when we feel like we failed, when we feel like we don't measure up, sometimes you just got to keep swimming. And that can be the key to unlocking everything else for a better future. When you are chasing big ideas and dreams, when you have an entrepreneurial endeavor, these moments will happen. Happens to all of us. And that little message of just keep swimming can launch us into a future when disappointment creeps in, can launch us into a future when failure happens, and can launch us into a future when all else seems to fail. When we keep swimming, when we persevere past all we know, past the failures, past the disappointments, past the moments where we don't think we can keep on going on, when we persevere When we keep on swimming, this can help us unlock a new future. Ultimately, by keeping on the journey that we've started, we can open up the possibilities to reach the dreams we've always desired. We simply just can't give up. And for most entrepreneurs, that is the single biggest key to their success. They keep swimming when others decide it's time to give up. Entrepreneurship is a hard journey. It's a journey filled with disappointment, with being let down by yourself and others, of success and high highs and disappointment and low lows. But no matter your season, just remember, this too will pass. When you have successes, you're going to have failures. And when you have failures, when you persevere, you will have successes. Just keep going. Keep on swimming. And the disappointment you will get on the other side of it and you will see victory. As we wrap up today's episode, I hope this discussion around disappointment, 
around turning disappointment into positive change for the future or preventing disappointment to ever being able to start. I hope that it's encouraged you, no matter where you are on your journey, whether it's an entrepreneurial endeavor, whether it's a job that you have, whether you're starting out on that journey of chasing big ideas and dreams, or whether you're just trying to provide for your family. Disappointment can be a challenging foe to conquer. And I hope today's episode's given you some ideas and tips and suggestions on how you can face it, how you can overcome it, and how you can really get to that next season of your life where you see all the possibilities begin to take shape and form in front of you. I could tell you countless stories of my own successes, my own failures, my victories, and my disappointments, just like every other entrepreneur could. But I want to remind you, your story is beautiful, and it needs to be celebrated. It needs to be heard. Your story, filled with high highs, low lows, mountain peaks, and valleys low, no matter where you're at, your story is significant, and the world needs you. The world needs dreamers. The world needs people with big ideas that are going to change society, that are going to change the way we approach problems. The world needs you. The world is filled with darkness right now. We need people filled with light, with hope, and not disappointment. So I hope today's episode fills you with that hope, that gives you that new fire within to begin to spark those ideas and dreams to take shape. And if you're discouraged, I hope it gives you a new sense, a new resolution for a future that you can create. I would love to hear your stories of overcoming disappointment and hear your tips. We'd love to share it with other people who may be encouraged by it too. So drop us a note, hello at jumblethink.com. It's hello at jumblethink.com. Let's continue the conversation on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, wherever you like to connect. Let's drop a note. Let's let's hear those stories of disappointment and overcoming the disappointment so others can be encouraged by your story and that your story can be a catalyst for others to be encouraged to make their disappointment into a new success story. I want to thank you for tuning into today's episode and sticking in through the entire thing. On our next episode, our guest is Rachel Brinke, and we have some other incredible guests lined up for the rest of season two. So make sure you check out every episode that's coming up of the Jumble Think podcast. Until next time, get out there, chase those big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.